Hi everybody, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, for any of you who've seen the show before, you know we talk about what Bridging Heaven and Earth means and what the, the theme of the show dedicated to the oneness is. And when it came time to book this season, we were looking through the, you know, the New Age journals to see if there were new people who would come on who had written books. And the first book we saw when we opened the book is this book, Bridging Heaven and Earth. <laughs> and after the first thought of like, well, I guess we have to sue for copyright infringement, we moved on like this would be, what an incredible fit this would be. And so we try to contact our guest tonight, Leonard Jacobson, and we ended up hooking up and finding out that there was just such a really incredible connection about his experience of, of coming into that love, of coming into that one, of bridging heaven and earth. And Bridging Heaven and Earth is part of a trilogy that uh, Leonard's written, uh, Words from Silence, Embracing the President, and I think that the most recent book is Bridging Heaven and Earth. And, and in, that is such a perfect fit for what this show is about, and to bring another voice, another voice. He was brought up in Australia, he comes from Australia, he was one of the leading spiritual teachers in Australia. And to bring a voice from another part of the world, as you know, people who've watched this show, that we have people from just all over the world coming here to share their love in their own way. But basically, it's about that oneness, about that love, about that connection, about the, the bridging of heaven and earth. And an old friend of ours, Leslie, who was on the show a while back and came on, and we got a lot of calls about trying to get her back, and we couldn't get her back right now, but we have two videos of her music uh, with us, and one of the songs is called Heaven and Earth. And that song Leslie and I wrote together uh, uh, that we have a new CD coming out, Bridging Heaven and Earth. So this is a real Bridging Heaven and Earth show, so we're really excited about it. And I think if you can stay with us and stay with us for the next hour, that experience of the, the sameness between Bridging Heaven, of Heaven and Earth, the real experience of the oneness, where all the div divisions and all the separations break down and all you experience in a human body feels like love, feels like bliss, feels like connectedness. And that's what Leonard here is here to talk about, and that's what Leslie is here to sing about in her, in her way. And so we're just really excited to, to have another show of Bridging Heaven and Earth where the real focus is Bridging Heaven and Earth. So please join me in a short meditation. Just settle into your, into your moment, settle into your life. Just come with us now in an hour of Bridging Heaven and Earth. So please join me. Hi, uh, so we're going to start tonight's show with uh, a song from Lesia. It's, it's going to be on the new CD, uh, Lesia Bridging Heaven and Earth. She and I wrote it together, and we're going to see it with a slideshow from an old friend of ours, Walter Matheson. So whenever we're ready, uh, it's called Heaven and Earth.
Hi, uh, we're on the set with Leonard. Welcome, Leonard. Thank you, Alan. So, you know, we've talked about in the opening, I must have said, Bruce, I've heard about it 12 times. I said some kind of record. When you wrote that book, what did you want it to say? What did you mean about bridging heaven and earth? Well, first, I'd like to say that I'm glad you're not suing me for right. copyright right. infringement here. Not yet. I summoned people. Right. I had the same thought. Right. <laughs> I figured when I called you, he's going to go, who's going to sue first? And actually, we're both former lawyers, so it's like a real nut house. We here. could represent right. ourselves. We don't even need to hire a lawyer. Right. Okay. It's like Thomas Jefferson said, what do you say? If somebody who represents himself has a fool for a client, <laughs> we've established that right. already, so I guess we can only go up from there. Thank so, you. what do you know? Bridging heaven and earth. Well, it's really um, something that came to me that was revealed to me during these awakenings that I've been through. And you, you went back, and why don't you pick, take people up to the, you know, through the awakenings and what the knowledge is that were given you during that period? Um, that's quite a long story, but it began in 1981, and I was pretty much taken over or taken into a spontaneous spiritual mystical awakening. I had no idea what was happening to me, I had no preparation for it, I had no framework to place this experience into. And what it did was it completely catapulted me into uh, the experience of uh, oneness, uh, perfection, love. And about this experience lasted about three weeks. It was a completely altered state of uh, consciousness. And about halfway through it, um, I had a direct experience of God, and up until that point I was an agnostic, and so this really took me by surprise. Oh <laughs> and uh, so that was the first uh, experience, and it, it was just an ongoing deep uh, healing experience of oneness, love, perfection, pretty much what this show is about. And there's been an experience similar to that about every three years. And it's interesting that they've almost been sequential, because really? the second one picked up where the, the first one left off. and. Do you think it, was, it takes three years for you to digest it? Yeah, more? there was there was an integration process going on. So let's say God was compassionate and right. gave, gave, me, a, gave me a rest, right. a break. And um, but what was revealed throughout the whole thing, and and it was becoming simplified, more and more simplified with each awakening, was this sense that it is a coming. What we're doing here in physical form, the purpose of our being here, the purpose of our journey. Uh, through time as, as, as humans it, yeah. uh, uh, is th this life in physical form is, is so sacred and so special that the, the peak of, of, of consciousness is realized while we're in physical form. It's a coming together of the formless and the form of heaven and earth, of the mind and the body. Um, and that coming together occurs within us in physical form as an experience within consciousness. And as we open up into that state, that perfect coming together between those, the formless and the form. The harmony between the two. The harmony, the, the, the coming together. It's a bringing right. together of the two into the right. one, which right. is Absolutely. the revelation of oneness. Right. And um, that there's no difference in a sense, there's no separation. All separation dissolves, just right. as you said in your introduction. Right. It's, a, it's, it's an experience. You can't actually comprehend what we're speaking of from the mind. It's something that has to be experienced directly. And then once you experience it directly, you know it. Right, and there's no... And then, right. then you move completely beyond belief. It move, takes you beyond the world of belief into the world of knowing. And it's not knowing within time. It's not knowing that you take into your mind and say, and, and convert it to knowledge. It's knowing that's always alive in the moment. It must be always alive in the moment. Because that's the only place it really exists. Right. And so what happens in, the, in that coming together of these dimensions is, is the revelation of what's actually here, where we are. This is already heaven on earth. This is heaven on earth, and we're not aware of it in our general, sort of the, the, the level of consciousness we normally function at, until we come into this meeting point, into this oneness, and then suddenly you see what's here, you behold it, and there's nothing much you can do from that point except surrender to it. And uh, basically... And write books and do television write shows. Write books and do television shows and just feel very grateful. Right. Yeah. Or do whatever you do. I mean, it's, it doesn't... Right. There's no... There's nothing you can do or can't do. It's just to to move through life in that experience. Uh, and it seems to me that uh, that in itself is is the remainder of the journey because it's all very well to experience this exalted awakened state of consciousness where heaven on earth is revealed. Uh, but 
at that deepest level, it's as if there's no time anymore. You've entered into the eternal now. And then the rest of the journey, if you know, if you if you want to move back into the world, the world of time, and live life with some level of normal normalcy to it, then the rest of the journey, as I see it through life, is how do I integrate this higher awakened consciousness into daily living? How do I bring the two together? So it's again another case of bringing the two together until even that separation dissolves, and everything just keeps. The two continually dissolving into the one. Yeah. And, and how did you decide that once you started to have these experiences, that the way you would manifest that is through writing these incredible books? And was it your idea to write a trilogy to begin with? I mean, no. just one that came then two. And yeah, I wrote the first, and I thought that was it. Uh, I thought I never thought I'd have another awakening either. Mm -hmm. Everyone right. I have, I think, well, that's the last one. Right. Actually, I would like it to be the last one. Really? Well, they're very intense uh -huh. and uh, they're very multi-dimensional. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, yeah, then the second one came, uh, embracing the present. And, so the uh, first book was Words from Silence. The, the first one was Words from Silence, and uh, then embracing the present, and then uh, those two deal much more with. Uh, how to bring ourselves present, how to live in the present moment, how to remain present, how to deal with the, uh, how to be with the thinking mind that keeps catching us back up into the world of the mind, the world of the ego. Um, a lot of uh, keys are revealed in those first two books. And then the third, the third book, Bridging Heaven and Earth, goes much more into the mystical, metaphysical realm. Um, and it really, the third book can't really be read with the mind. It has to be read with the heart, the soul. Um, with the, it really has to be read by the you who already knows the truth. And so it's really just a, a resonating together in the truth. Uh -huh. and it, it, it it's like vibrating, like we talk about the show, is what's the purpose of the show? And if we can give a purpose, it's to send out a vibrational love. Right. You know, and that's... Yeah. And uh, what's beautiful as we come into this oneness is, in a way, it doesn't matter who's speaking and who's hearing, or who's asking the questions and who's answering the questions, because there's a level where, where um, we're all one anyway. There's only one being here, one being here interviewing and one right, being responding, one. Right, exactly. which is a very uh, a beautiful realization. It takes a lot of the tension out of life, a lot of the stress when... You come it takes a lot of competition, a lot of the, uh -huh. e the ego right. grinding and the ego mm -hmm. going through that process. So why don't you take people through, like, a Words from Silence, the, the subtext is an invitation to spiritual awakening. So what were the, like, the main focus of that book and how did it, you know, people respond to it and come into a greater understanding and then we'll go through each book and see you know, how, you, how you've been led and how you've, you're, you know, you've led people all over the world into more experience and understanding. The books really can't be clearly defined in any way because each, pa each page is actually independent. So you can read a page and sit with it and, and meditate on it or, or relate to it, move to the next page and this, it's in a sense connected, it's sequential, but it's also independent. Um, the first book essentially is is just an invitation saying to people who may not be aware of this awakened consciousness that's possible in everyone, for everyone, um, just letting them know that it, this is it. it, it's possible. It's available. It's available. This is what it is. This is what it feels like. This is what's possible. It's already full and whole and complete within you anyway. All you have to do is tune into it. Uh, all you have to do is wake up into it. Now, then uh, it talks about, well, what are you waking up from and what are you waking up into? And the answer, as, as it's revealed in the first two books, really, it's hard to separate the two, is that we're waking up out of this level of consciousness called the mind, where everyone is living in the mind, everything is experienced through the mind, channeled through the mind, uh, interpreted through the mind, all our concepts, ideas, beliefs, opinions. The mind is like a computer that, that carries um, the whole of the past with it. And, and so we're not really here now in this moment when we're functioning at the level of consciousness called mind. And uh, not only that, but within the world of the mind as a level of consciousness, the ego develops slowly over our lifetime until it becomes the ruler, the dictator at the level of mind. And, and the ego, in the way you describe it, meaning? The ego is ultimately uh, 
Well, it can be really defined or, or explained in a number of different ways, but the, the simplest and most helpful way to really define the ego is that anything other than perfect, silent, awake presence of love is the ego. Any thought you have is of the ego. E even a spiritual thought is ultimately of the ego. And so uh, what I teach, what I share is don't believe in that. Don't believe in your thoughts. Don't believe in your beliefs. I mean, have them by all means. Enjoy them. But don't believe in them because they're not the truth. All The only thing that is the truth is life in this moment. Whatever is here in this moment is the truth. And what's really interesting for me as I'm sitting here with you is you're dissolving into light. And that's what happens when you um, when you come into oneness. I imagine that I'm doing the same with you. I can only guess that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the oneness just starts to reveal itself. So we're, what, what the invitation is, is to, to awaken out of this limited world of the mind, which is ultimately a world, world of illusion, into this deeper, fuller level of consciousness, which is your beingness, your essence. It's you who exists fully and only in this moment. And once you know that state, once you know it really deeply from your own direct experience, it can't ever be lost. It never goes away. Once you've really opened into that, or it's opened into you, and it's not like you have to create it because it's already there. It's, it's really the, the best way of expressing it is it's a tuning in process, like tuning in a radio from one station to another or a TV program. Um, and so th that's the invitation to awaken to this deeper level of consciousness. And then what I say also is that um, when we're really here, really present, we discover that God is here. God is here in everything has everything the, this very moment is god revealing god's self and uh, and, and can it be otherwise no it can't not yeah. if you're present yeah. but if you're not present if you're in the world of the mind then you're living in a world of your own creation that you sustain through your thoughts and through your beliefs particularly belief it's belief it's the energy of belief that sustains us in this consciousness called mind and beliefs being Give a well, few examples. Well, whatever you believe in. I believe that I'm a man. I believe that I'll die. I'll be, I believe that um, uh, that I'm an Australian. Uh, I believe that. Um, I mean, it, it, right. almost you all of what it says on your driver's license and your birth certificate and all those. Well, things. that actually even goes. It, it, it yeah, permeates into every aspect of our life. Our, right. If you really examine it, almost every aspect of our life is sustained through our beliefs, and uh, it's very challenging to to anyone really the, the possibility of moving beyond belief and 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 uh, what I say is the truth is beyond belief it, and I also say that it's in, it's in the books uh, the the, the truth this is very puzzling in a way uh, truth has no power to penetrate into the world of belief belief must dissolve of its own accord before the truth can arise and fill you so it's almost a belief has to recognize its own limitations and surrender to truth, to God, to love, however you want to put it. But it's, in a way, it's a spiral. I mean, you have more experience and then you have more faith and you have more surrender. You know, it's Absolutely. like... Absolutely. So, you know, it, it never is like as linear. As no, no, no. It's A spiral is definitely right. the way to put it. It's just as you deepen into presence, the mind is able to relax. As the mind relaxes, then you're able to deepen more into presence. Interestingly, what happens is as you deepen into presence, because presence, as you deepen into this level, that brings up whatever's still there within you that needs healing and release. So if you've got wounds from childhood, you don't have to go looking for them. What will happen is a natural part of this yeah, process. Shine, it's like shine the light on them. Exactly. And it actually brings them up. And all you have to do, you don't have to fix these wounds. You don't have to analyze them. Uh, any of that. All you have to do is allow these things up into the light of consciousness, into the into the energy of your own being, your own presence, which is love and acceptance. And then something almost miraculous occurs in that, and you have a, a real healing going on, a release of you from the past, which allows you to deepen into the present. And what what happens also is once you've done your life in this lifetime, all your childhood stuff and all your relationship with your mother and father. Um, it, it sometimes happens that past lives start to spontaneously come up. And my guess is, or my, my experience is, that once your past lives are substantially brought up into consciousness, then what starts coming up, and this is the, where it becomes very interesting, is collective issues, so that there's actually 
collective healing goes on with you, within your consciousness if you're if you're present enough and large enough to allow that and not be frightened by it. But okay, bring it on. Okay, God, whatever it is, I'm I'm here. I have no attitude of for or against. I have no judgment. And so whatever it is, it is welcome to come through and, and be healed and released. And I'm I'm absolutely convinced that it does occur at a collective level. Once well, you, you experience it that way. In I way. do experience it, yeah. That, I mean, we've had a lot of guests talk about, like, at, at this particular time, I mean, the earth is healing and almost the earth is healing the rest of the universe because this was like a festering saw in a certain way. Yes. And that, you know, we're all experiencing that. We're all experiencing that healing process as being part of the whole because we can, we are the whole and we're part of the whole and that's, mm -hmm. that's the glory of it. Right. And uh, it's so interesting to observe how um, when I started this work 16 years ago and I started to go through my own awakenings, when I was working with people, it would take a year, two years, three years to get them to a certain point. Or for them to get to a certain point. I don't want to say for me to get them there. But, um, for that openness to for happen. For that openness to happen. The work that had to be done, the, 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 the grinding, the, grinding, the, the encountering yeah. and all of that, the uh, expression. But now it seems to be really collapsing in. Uh, and uh, maybe one year is a realistic time frame for people who really want to make a commitment to awakening and some are getting it in a weekend or in a day or it's, it's amazing actually it's like, it's as if there are waves of consciousness moving forward or awakening so there's that, a lot of talk i don't know if you see it because you travel the you know mm -hmm. we just basically stay and do the show and people come to us but uh that's you an know, easy you, way to do it yeah it's one way to <laughs> right. do it but uh you know, you travel the world. I mean, yeah. and there's a lot of story about kids coming in, and, uh, uh, and indigo kids, or I mean, a lot of different definitions or, or, or uh, categories, but just coming in with extraordinary gifts and consciousness. It's, it's absolutely true. I feel so privileged and grateful when I have 14 or 15 year olds attend one of my seminars, and they're so obviously already having here. an extraordinary experience. We're, we're just really, they're, already, they're already where I'm pointing my finger and saying right. this is possible, they're already there and they're having an extraordinary experience. But what I was saying about the waves is as I think in the 60s a whole, a whole lot of us did this big effort and pushed forward and, and went through a lot of difficult work to get there and that made it easier for the next wave to come through and then each wave that comes through it's like it's, there's more and more people getting onto the next wave and coming through and there'll be a point, um, like the hundredth monkey. The hundredth, yeah. Uh, that, that it's just going to suddenly. We'll, we'll the momentum has shifted enough that you've reached the top, and it's like downhill. The winds that you're back right. now. It's quite possible that one day we'll open our eyes. One day I'll wake up, or you wake up, and everybody's awake. And it'll be a very strange experience. Yeah, it's going to be a weirder coffee house. I'm not used to that. that. That's that's right. <laughs> anyway, I mean, maybe that's wishful thinking or optimism, but it's it's very possible that that could happen. On the other hand, you know, if you get out there and watch TV or read the newspapers... It doesn't look like it happened yet. It's not happening yet, no. So, <laughs> well, not before we got on the show. Yeah. Maybe this is it. Uh, maybe this is like the hundredth monkey that, show. That could be it. You never could tell. Uh, so how is your experience going around the world? And are people becoming more and more open and more and more people, you know, wanting to read the books, coming to the workshops, stuff like that? It seems to me that people are at different levels in their journey and I can't get people to pay attention to the work that I'm doing unless they're really at that level that they relate to it. There's a lot of people that are just not interested, they're more interested in, in other kinds of things and so you have to allow that and let everyone do right. what they're doing right. but um, the ones that are interested are getting it really easily Close and uh, becoming present. But it's such an ongoing, it's such a it, no wonder it's taken us so long to wake up, Alan, because it's, so, it's such a delicate and tricky journey because you can awaken or have an awakening experience and the ego can't wait to, to grab it, it, no, to grab it, it right. to steal it for its right. own and then walk around and say, I'm enlightened, I'm awakened, and then the whole thing is lost. Right. And um, there's a lot of people who go so far and then kind of just... It's it's, tri it's tricky track. business. It's we were talking tricky, about that. Yeah. You know, we had ended up having lunch together and breakfast. I hadn't looked at it. We were driving around all day, and listening we, to music. Yeah, listening <laughs> to music and talking, and yeah. you know, really, it was an interesting thing. Is that it's just 
you know, I mean, we've been so gifted, and still it's, it's not an easy process here, or it hasn't been throughout history. And maybe now we're coming, and we were talking that uh -huh. it seems like the energy is different now. Like you're saying, people are coming, younger kids are coming to it, and people who normally took a long time to, to do this aren't taking as long now. There, right. There's some different thing happening now, it seems. What I say to people now is, you better hurry up and get enlightened. And I just use that lightheartedly right. that term. You better hurry up and get enlightened, because that's the easy part. The difficult part is, okay, now that I'm awake, how on earth do I live in this world? How do I do that? Because yeah. everything changes. You're, the way you are in relationship changes, your attitude towards work, money, I mean, everything changes. How do I live in this world that is still functioning in another in a, way? Like an old paradigm. How do you bring exactly. a new paradigm exactly. to the And old how paradigm. do you live in this new paradigm, right. uh, this, new, this new way of uh, being? All right, Lena, I think we'll take a break and listen to the, the second Lessia song. Uh, this song is called Enough God, Les Lesia wrote, and it's a, a beautiful video. Uh, Nancy Campbell did it a while ago, and uh, it's Lesia doing Enough God, written and performed by Lesia. So whenever we're ready.
Matt Rin Leonard. Mm -hmm. And that's also, that's Leslie, that's going to be on our new CD, Bridging Heaven and Earth. So we're back with Leonard. In one of your press releases, you talked about four, or there was somebody sent us some information about four steps. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? You know, four steps and is this two steps? I have, I have no idea. Christ. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, four steps. <laughs> I finally, I must have gotten the press release of somebody else to show. It was like, probably mine, but uh, <laughs> uh, I can't right remember under, what It was sounded like Buddha. I mean, I remember thinking the right understanding, right. Right, oh, sport oh, jackets. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Dressing well, I don't know. <laughs> but you don't remember that? We uh, can no, go I, on. I can I, I, ask another question. No, I can, I can try and answer that. Okay. I'll see. Um, actually, I'm not sure that I can. The first, the four steps. Okay. Um, first is right. Ah, yes. Right understanding. That's right. That was a That's the, Thank you. You gave me a clue on right. that. You gave me a hint. I'm not giving you any more. Okay. I, <laughs> okay. I think they're, they're coming right. to me. Okay. Um, you better check your press packet. It's, it's in books. <laughs> First is right understanding. In other words, we really have to, to have an understanding of who we are and what we're doing here, which brings about a, a relaxation because and, until you know what the purpose of this journey is, and you have a clear understanding of that, then the mind is not going to relax its control over everything. Um, and how do you get this right understanding? Do you have tools or do you recommend tools or well, techniques or ways? No, or? no, it's simple. I'll just tell you. Oh, <laughs> all right, all you millions of people, whatever the right understanding right. is Here's coming right now. Here it is. Okay. Go, baby. So here it is. The sole purpose in being here. Are you ready for it? I don't know if I can say the, uh, the sole purpose, that's S-O-L-E, the sole purpose in being here is to be here. The sole purpose, S-O-U-L purpose in being here is just to be here. And so the right understanding is to realize that we're all lost in the mind, we're caught in the mind, we're actually imprisoned in the world of the mind, and that the task is to find our way through that. That's a little bit like Moses leading his people out of the out of Egypt. That's actually Rather than the blood, the blood. something like that. That would help. Um, the second is coming into right relationship, um, right relationship with your thoughts, your your, your ego, your uh, your emotions. Right relationship with life, and that right relationship is based on love. Is love uh, a relationship of love and acceptance? It, it's the only thing that will work. A lot of people on the spiritual path are very subtly trying to annihilate the ego. They're trying to get rid of it. When I awaken, when I become enlightened, there'll be no ego left. That is an absolute guaranteed way to make sure you never awaken. The ego is involved in that. Yeah, the eye. The yeah. eye is just running around. Right. The ego is involved in that, right. uh, actually getting you to try and annihilate it so that it'll never happen because the ego yeah, will never allow that. Like that. It's yeah. tricky. And there's actually a lot of teachings. If you look at some of the great masters, there's some wrong teaching in some of it. If, if you look through some of the teachings, there is definitely, it's implied that when you awaken, your ego is dissolved or annihilated or, or gone. And that's very unhelpful. So right relationship based on love. In relation to, in relationship to others, life, yourself, and every aspect of yourself, which really means an end to judgment. Judgment is what keeps us in separation. Any kind of judgment. It's in the story of Adam and Eve. It's revealed there. Um, God told Adam and Eve, "You can eat of any fruit of any tree in the garden except the fruit of the tree of knowledge of what is good and evil." And what did they do? They got tempted by the serpent. And, uh, and they ate. And then m most people who, who read the Bible assume that somehow because they broke God's word, God's instruction, they were kicked out by God, punished in some way uh, for doing that. And that's absolutely untrue. What happened was that they were in oneness. In, in, in Adam and Eve, as a metaphor, a story, a metaphor uh, reflecting oneness. They were in the Garden of Eden, which is oneness. Um, heaven on a, just heaven actually. The moment you decide this is good and this is evil, you've gone from one into two. The duality. You've gone into duality, into duality, which is the world of the mind. And so you've taken yourself out of the oneness into the two. God didn't do it. God's saying, I told you not to do that, my beloved children. Why did you do that? And then Adam and Eve freak out. We all freak out. It's a metaphor for all of us. And we're now, then, then we become lost in the world of the two. 
and we get more and more lost and we can't find our way back. And judgment, it is even a judgment about being in the world of the two. So there's judgment upon judgment upon judgment. So if you want to find the way back to oneness, you have to reverse that process and go through it. You have to basically go through a process of transcending judgment in your life. Now, how do you do that? That's a, that's a tall order also. Because you can't try and get rid of judgment. That would be another judgment. So what do you do? All you can do is bring judgment to consciousness whenever it arises within you and just see it for what it is. Oh, there you are, judgment. Hello. And let it go. You're not, you're not for it or against it. And what happens is that over a period of time, it all begins to relax and you start finding your, your way back to oneness. So what are we up to? That's two. That's, we're up to three, are we? Oh, well, the third is probably the most important. You must have the direct experience of, of presence, of being here now. A lot of people are walking around thinking they know what it means to be present, but they actually don't. You have to have that direct experience. And once you've had it yourself, you've directly experienced it. Even if it's for five seconds, you know it. You will never be deceived again. You must come through your own experience to be able to distinguish so clearly between what is awakened presence in this moment, life in this moment, you in this moment, and then what is it like then when I go into my mind. It's a different experience. So once you've had the direct experience of, um, of awakened presence or just being present, um, then everything else can flow from that. You can't really bring right relationship to your mind, your ego, your feelings, unless you've got the awakened presence within you anyway, because that is where the love and the acceptance is. Um, so there are three very important things. The fourth, I can't remember. Okay. Well, move on. I can't remember. Right. <laughs> yeah. Shows you a bad interviewer and a bad right. guest. We got, we got three out of four. We got seven. Three's not bad. Three's right? not bad. <laughs> If only we were playing baseball. That's so right. Three out of four. So, when you, when you started to have these experiences, mm -hmm. I mean, what you found was that your life changed. I mean, and it changed over time because you had to, like, integrate it. You had that to become real to you. It changed. After the first awakening, my life changed completely and totally during that time. Um, but then... I, I like, for example, I never went home after that awakening. My life just moved on and on and on and went in a different direction. I never, never returned to, to at least for some years. Uh, I just followed a path, whatever was revealing itself in the moment. But then, as I decided and as I chose to assimilate more into the living in the world again, then there was a whole process of learning how to integrate that. And that seems to be a trial and error thing. You make mistakes, you realize that didn't work. That's not keeping me in the harmony. That's not keeping me in the love. What hook inside me hooked me into that? And so it really becomes a process of, of discovering the hooks that are still in you because we, we still exist at the human level. So what, what aspects, what hooks, what desires, what fears are still functioning that will hook me into um, a, a lesser level of consciousness? or. A, now, now, you talk about no judgment or lack of judgment. Now, is there such a thing, would you say, as discernment? Yeah, discernment is different to judgment. It's, I'm often asked that question. Judgment has an energy in it that, again, I don't think you can define it. Um, I can't define it. But you know when it's an energy of judgment in it. it. And when it's just discernment. Discernment is exercising your free will to choose um, to look here or look there, or, or this feels better for me. There's no rejection in it. There's no uh, pushing well, we away. We can see what, what one would describe as differences, like there's a taller person and a shorter person. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're not judging whether taller or shorter is good, but we see it. We're, yeah. we're discerning that. The judgment comes in when you say, this is good, this is bad. I want this, I don't want that. Um, but then discernment, it's such a, it is a fine line, but uh, for me it's an energy that you know whether the judgment ultimately is a, is a, a, what's underneath judgment is a desire to annihilate. I want to get rid of that. It's quite, when you really go deeply into judgment and really uncover its true nature and bring the judge up in you to examine, to bring to consciousness, you get to see what it's really like and it's really an energy of annihilation. Annihilating whatever you're judging to be negative? Ultimately, yes. Yeah, you want to get rid of it, you don't want it there. Criticism is 
an attempt to make someone smaller. Like I'll criticize you so you feel smaller and I get larger, then I can have control. But if that doesn't work, then I better move to the next level, which is judgment, which is a very subtle, very unconscious um, uh, energy of annihilation. So it's really something worth transcending in our lives. Mm -hmm. So you hold workshops all over the world where you bring like the three steps or the four steps, if you can remember, or, or just. How would you take somebody through like how you would go through a workshop? I mean, do you have workshops for weekends, for weeks? They vary. They vary. Um, for example, if I'm doing a two-hour a two -hour evening gathering, um, then I'll just start there. I have no agenda. And there's no... Um, I don't have anything I'm planning to say. We'll sit there. I'll sit there and, um, and slowly, slowly we'll come together in this oneness. Well, actually quite quickly. And then um, either something will come to me, I'll start speaking about something without having thought about it, or somebody will ask a question or share something. And so an evening like that is completely unstructured. Um, and it, what happens is people ask questions or something comes up for them because something that requires healing so um, or is in need of healing. In a workshop then, uh, like a weekend workshop, it, it is a little more structured, but often, but, but the underlying thing is pretty much what we did with this interview. We didn't prepare it. You, I didn't had no idea what you were going to ask me, and I imagine you didn't really know what you were going to ask anyway. No, I hadn't so, gotten there yet. Right. So um, how can it's it's like that in in the workshops, um, but underneath it all is this this process of um, recognizing when I'm in the mind, how to be with emotions, keep coming into that deeper level of presence. Um, you only have to experience the awakened presence, and that does all the work by itself. Once you know that place, once that's awake in you, alive in you, it's as if that, that has a momentum of itself. It's like inviting God into your life uh, in a direct way. And uh, uh, for me it feels like God takes over and everything that happens in your life is somehow orchestrated to keep deepening you into awakening or bring up whatever stuff is still there that needs to be brought to consciousness and healed and released. So in that way that you would feel comfortable saying that everything is perfect, everything is leading you into more experience, into more consciousness, into more love. Yeah, in, in, from the perspective of truth and presence, that is absolutely true, and I never ever forget that. But, you know, I'm not beyond occasionally getting caught and forgetting that everything is perfect, and, uh, and, and then maybe uh, two weeks later you realize, oh, that was perfect, that was difficult. But what a perfect lesson, what a perfect deal. I wouldn't have chosen that. I wouldn't have chosen that, definitely not. But thank you, God, because how else would I have learned that? So do you think as as more experience happens that that gap is not two weeks but two hours or two minutes or... You know what I mean? We're, we're coming more yes. into even the realization right. of the moment. Right. And then there's another level. See, there's, there's levels and levels and levels. And, and uh, I'm sure many of your viewers have experienced this. There's a point that opens up where everything seems to be reflecting to you in that moment. Messages or truth or the, uh, the, the very moment is the reflection of everything you could possibly want to know. Yeah, we're going to have all our guests looking for license plates tonight, so it could be a problem out there. It could be. It, it's a bit like that. <laughs> no, there's a tremendous amount of synchronicity yes. now. I mean, yes. for, you know, just like the Bridging Heaven and Earth book. I mean, how we all came, you know, we came together. I mean, mm -hmm. really, I mean, well, as soon as I saw that book, I said, oh, this guy's got to come on the show. I mean, I don't know. But anybody right. who's writing a book, Bridging Heaven and Earth, I mean, I know he's going to be far out. <laughs> right, well... Well, our meeting over breakfast was very spontaneous and easy, so uh, it's like we don't really need to speak to each other, but we'll do it anyway. Right, exactly. Yeah. Do you find now mm. that that part of like the process is manifesting that understanding, either in one way or another, and collaborating and doing it? I mean, coming together, you know, as much as we can with that ego to do a show, to do a this, to do a that, you know, whatever it is, but, you know, we could come together and for however long it it, it means, right. you know, is appropriate for us to come together. It's but like, more and more we can collaborate and it's do like it beautifully. It's like community. Right. It's Common like, unity. Yeah. yeah recognition. There, right. There's, a, there's community all over the world and when you find each other, when you encounter each other, it's really a blessing. Um, I mean, when you're traveling the world, do you find more, more of that available now in your life? I mean, I mean we... You know, we're in a funny position. This is the, the 95th show, and you know, extraordinary mm -hmm. people come in from right. all over right. and, and come and then just spend. So you're meeting them all the time. Yeah, right. and it's like just unbelievable how people, you know, I mean, 
there are people more well known than the Bridging Heaven Earth Show, right. there are people more well known than you, but we meet people who are so extraordinary and, and having such fantastic experiences that no one's ever heard of. We were talking about that today, we self published their book, but right. it doesn't mean that it's not unbelievable. I mean, it's just happening all over. Mm -hmm. Incredible CDs, incredible books. It seems to be scattered all over the place, and, and uh, the exciting thing is that some, some kind of coming together where there's a connection, um, whether it's through the internet or meeting on a show like this, um, it's very affirming to meet others who know what you're speaking about and know how you feel and know how you live in the world. It's affirming. Uh, we're not meant to be alone. We're not meant to be islands. We're, we're interdependent. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's deepening. You know, there's, it's written somewhere, um, when, when two or more are gathered in my name, right. there I am in the midst of them. And I relate to that statement so deeply. When we come together, something deeper opens up for all of us. And uh, I experience that all the time. Yeah, actually, I mean, people ask me sometimes, you know, if I had a, a tools or something to recommend, and I say, well, you know, yes and no, <laughs> you know, you're using words and all that. But I mean, the things that I would talk about is like being able to be quiet, whether you call it meditation, but some ability to be quiet and being around holy company. I mean, not that everyone's not holy, but people who have some amount of recognition of the surrender to God, the experience of God, the desire for God, however you want to phrase right. it and stuff like that. And that is a, you know, I would say that for me, looking at it and surveying the human condition are the two most important things. Yeah. If you could use words and what's important and what's not important. Well, I, like I agree. You mentioned techniques or methods. One of the things that I share is the key to being present. Because we can meditate for lifetime after lifetime and not actually really become present. Um, if you look at meditation, ultimately what it is, is a practice at the level of mind, the mind practicing something to get somewhere, and it can't happen at that level. You, or, or you might have brief moments of silence, and as soon as you finish medita meditating, you're back into the world of the mind, as you always were. And uh, there's such a simple key that was revealed to me, or, or came up uh, during one of, my, one of these awakenings, or somehow in this process, and I'm happy to share it here. It's so, it's so utterly simple. It's so simple it seems absurd. The key to being the rest of the show probably will <laughs> light up with that idiot. So it's really sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, the key to being present is simply to remember to be present with that which is present. Just bring yourself present with what's here, and you will come out of the mind, and your mind you will become silent, and you'll be present. It's that simple. And then it's just a question of moment to moment remembering, choosing to be present with what's actually here. You can't try and stop the, the thoughts. If you try and stop the thoughts, they just keep going. There's no way we can try to stop thinking. And yet so much, so much um, of that comes into meditative practice. Um, meditating to stop thinking. And it doesn't work, ultimately. What the only is, in my experience, what really, what really works simply and instantly and immediately is, is, that, is that simple key. Remember, moment to moment, to be present with what's actually here. If you can see it, hear it, feel it, taste it, or touch it, you can be present with it through your senses. And then you could ask, well, who is present? Who is present with what is here? And the answer is just in silence, I am. And that I am presence is the awakened state of being. That's, that's it. That's the Christ consciousness. Just I am. Not I am enlightened. Who is enlightened? I am. It keeps coming back to that silent, still, presence that's utterly here and utterly connected to everything that is here. It's far out. What to say? It's very simple. It's simple. It's and simple. the interesting thing is it, it feels better. I mean, it, yeah, yes. I mean, one feels yes. good and one doesn't. I mean, right. once you start experiencing what feels good, I mean, then it's like, what, what do you choose? And it's easy, it starts to be easy to choose that because if it, one feels, you feel happy, and the other you don't, and it's clear. There's one problem with that. It, what you're saying is, is true to a point, but the question is, who is doing the choosing? And until a certain level is reached, the ego is doing the choosing. 
And the ego is going to say, no way, I don't want that presence, I don't want the happiness, I've got everything worked out, I know life is about suffering, I know that I'm not loved, I'm not accepted, I know that I'm not good enough, but I've worked out how to deal with it, I'm in control, I'm looking after everything, I know how to get on in this world, I know all the strategies to make myself uh, get, to get what I want. And so the ego is not very, very willing to give up the control. And it's a gentle seduction of the ego to bring it to a place of relaxation, a place of comfort, and ultimately to a place of surrender. And uh, so it does come down to, well, who's doing the choosing? And then a certain point is reached where suddenly you're here enough, the I am of you is here enough, that, that it transcends transcends that. So uh, there's, there's more momentum for that. Exactly. That starts to self-perpetuate and you find um, a shift occurs where prior to the shift you're predominantly living in the world of the mind, that's your home, and you occasionally have experiences of presence and being. And when the shift occurs you predominantly live in the world of presence, in the world of being, and you occasionally have experiences in the mind. And once that shift occurs then really, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's, it's down. downhill. That's it. So, yeah, it's downhill. Forget about it. <laughs> right, just go enjoy. It. Right, exactly. You know, have fun. Yeah, yeah. So, would you say that's? I mean, you're traveling the world, having fun, and writing these books, and meeting with people, and just sharing their joy and sharing. Your, I mean, you know, we always talk about it, and we, using words almost has to include a duality. Right. But in essence, that's what your your life has been about. A lot of my life is about that, but not all of it. At times. Um, I make choices that lead me down a path that become exhausting for me or uh, takes me out of the harmony and so it's up to me to be smart enough to correct that choice and hopefully not too, as you said, shorter rather than later, sooner rather, mm -hmm. rather than later. So just quickly, what, what do you think, I mean someone obviously like yourself has had tremendous experience, mm -hmm. how do we get <laughs> to bite the apple again, how do we do that? We just still have desires, we still have needs, we still have... How would you describe that? How to bite the apple, how to come no, back... How, to... how do we end up, you know, here's somebody like you, when you do these things that take you out. Oh, well, ambition will take you out. Any desire for the future will take you out. Of, whatever takes you out of the present moment. Right. And, take, then, and, and then you out of the build the momentum. It builds up. One, it, right. You can go out a little way, but if you're not careful, um, it starts to spin out. And then before right. you know it, you're caught in right. ambition or, or desire or, right. or whatever, uh, rejection, whatever right. it is, um, you get caught into the ways of the world. Right. And there's a very true statement um, at some point that arises within us, which is, I am, I am in the world, but not of the world. Right. And so there's a kind of... Um, uh, detachment in a sense. Yeah. Uh, it develops. You know, yeah. I think we've done it again, the show's over. So, uh, anybody wants any information, 805-687-2053, Leonard's workshops, his books, he's all over the world. Good night, God bless you, thanks for coming, 805-687-2053, good night. <laughs>